Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm Teacher Oakley. Welcome to Verbling. Hi. Uh, once again, today we will be talking about TOEFL, that big bad English language test. Uh, and again, this week we are going to continue talking about the listening section of the test. In today's class, we're going to discuss some strategies, uh, important points uh, that you should know. What, what are you listening for? How do you know what to listen for? They're going to be speaking a lot in a lecture or perhaps a conversation. And they're going to be talking, 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 talking. And you're listening. What are you listening for? Well, I'm going to help you out with that today. Uh, you can make notes while you listen. On the TOEFL, you can and should make notes. Uh, how do you know what to make notes of? Uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about that. And hopefully... Uh, we should be able to get a chance to listen to an actual TOEFL lecture. So you have an example of the type of uh, lecture that you most likely hear on the test. Uh, okay, so that's what we're doing today. I do want to let you know that unfortunately I could not book a class for tomorrow. So Wednesday, sorry to say, no TOEFL class. Thursday and Friday, however, we're, we're going to be doing a lot more practice, practice, practice. We'll be listening to a, a lot of TOEFL material and practicing the questions. Today, again, we'll be looking at strategies, uh, how to take notes, how to know what you're listening for. The most basic strategy I can share with you is quite simple. Before you take the TOEFL test or the IELTS test or TOEIC or any other crazy test that you want to take, quite obviously you need to get a good night's sleep and eat a nice hearty breakfast. Because if your brain's not working, <laughs> it's not going to help you. Hi, uh, Zingo. Hi, uh, Zingo. Hi, teacher. Hello. Uh, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm getting echo, so I don't know if you have the verbling window open, or yeah, maybe you're, you need your headset. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah, that's better. No echo. Yeah. No echo. Good job. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Very nice, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, Jose. How are you? I, I'm doing well. And you? I'm okay. Thank you very much. Nice to have you in the class. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, uh, she's chatting in the chat box, so I'm going to say good morning, Anastasia. Yeah, good morning, Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, thank you. What um, time is it in Philippines right now? It's 11 in the morning. Okay, we have 9. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Two, Two hours, hours different. Mm -hmm. Right, though. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, well, let's get started here talking about the crazy TOEFL test. All right, some uh, basic strategy, and then we're hopefully going to have a chance to to listen a little bit. Uh, okay, basic strategy. What are you looking for when you're listening to a lecture? And this is not only not only for for TOEFL. If you're if you're listening to any lecture, really in English or any language. There's some basic strategies that you're going to use. Now, conversations, we don't normally take notes when we hear a conversation. <laughs> that would be weird, huh? But uh, in this case, we're going to. this. So the same thing. 
basically what I'm talking to you about is uh, how to effectively take notes so that you can give, uh, so that you understand the information and you can answer questions about it. First of all, you know, don't memorize everything. Don't try to catch ev everything because you can't. Even uh, your second language speakers, but even a native speaker, if I'm listening to my professor in a classroom, I'm certainly not going to get every single nuance and detail that that professor is speaking. It's, it's just not really possible. So don't try to memorize everything. That makes no sense. Try to get the basic main idea. Um, there's going to be some kind of theme. In other words, a topic and a controlling idea. Uh, maybe, okay, the topic is about marmosets. <laughs> and the controlling idea is how they breed. Oh, okay. All right. Marmosets, how they feed. Marmosets, how they take care of their young. Marmosets, what do they do with the old marmosets? Do they send them to an old marmoset? Uh an old marmoset home? I don't know. But okay, marmosets is the topic, the controlling idea, all those things that I, I just made up. Uh, okay, so make sure you know that, which you will be able to hear in the beginning of the test. Ah, yes. You need to, very basically, my, my, first, my first suggestion was to get a good night's sleep and have plenty to eat. Yeah. In listening for listening for IELTS, TOEFL, whatever, you really have to concentrate because uh, the information you're listening for is going to come and then it's gone. So you have to concentrate on clues of what's coming. Part of your basic strategy, try to think of what logically comes next. It's, this is difficult because you're going to be making notes about what just happened, and you're also, if you're actively listening, you're going to be thinking about what comes next. We'll get we'll get into that more later. So for the main idea or purpose, usually that comes right in the beginning. So my point here is be actively listening right from the beginning. Don't. The recording starts, and, and then you start concentrating one, two sentences later. The professor is going to introduce the main topic right at the beginning. So be listening for it. It's coming, for sure. The speakers in the conversation, one is going to say, I have a big problem with blah, blah, blah. And that's going to be right at the beginning. So be ready and actually be actively thinking be prepared. You you know you'll see. You are going to listen to a lecture. Okay, get ready because he's going to mention his topic right away. You're going to listen to a conversation. All right, get ready because they're going to talk about their complaint or what they need immediately. It's coming very quickly. Uh, all right, focus on the structure. Uh, you should be making notes. You should be making notes of the points. Uh, if you can, the example, the points is most Im important. The examples. They will use comparisons. So, as you're making no notes, okay, uh, uh, the engine, oh, car engine, so engine, and it's like a heart. A human heart. Oh, okay. Engine, heart. Somehow combine those in your notes so you, you know that they go together. They may make cause and effect statements. So do the same thing. Uh, cigarette smoking causes heart attacks. So SIG, C-I-G, smoke. Short notes. Short notes is all you have time for. An arrow and then a picture of a heart with a cross through it. <laughs> okay? Seriously, you need to make notes as fast as you can. So thinking that you can write out everything, oh, no, no. The ideas, the points and examples are coming very fast. Sometimes the speaker 
will go off on a tangent or he he will talk about something completely unrelated. Sometimes he'll just make unrelated small talk. So sometimes the points come very fast, boom, boom, boom. Sometimes he'll make a point, an example, and then he'll talk about something else for 30 seconds and you'll be thinking, what? Should I make notes? What is he talking about? Well, no. Stick to the topic because in the beginning you heard the topic. Uh, however, sometimes there are questions about unrelated uh, information, but usually just one question. So don't don't pay attention too much. And the other thing you have to there may be a question about the speaker's attitude. So you're listening for his intonation. Does he seem like he's very determined to make his point? Is he talking with low, uh, with a low tone or low pitch? Does he seem very happy and lighthearted? Uh, oh, okay. Is he just giving information in a very neutral tone? Is he just giving information? Is he feeling very strong about his opinion, his or her? Or uh, is he uh, doesn't seem to really care? Uh, especially important in the conversation because the conversation between two people somebody's upset somebody has a problem or an issue and the other person is trying to be helpful or maybe they're neutral definitely you're gonna have these kinds of questions about how the speakers feel about the problem especially in the conversation um, okay and the big point which we're just we're really I'm really gonna beat into you today this is the same thing that you guys have done my classes before you know when you're speaking I always tell you guys use signal words or signal phrases right uh, discourse markers whatever you want to call them you need to be li uh, just as much as when you're speaking you you need to say in my opinion blah 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 my first reason is secondly also or you use uh, contrast you say on one hand on the other hand just as a, when you're speaking you should use that when you're writing you should write that to keep your writing organized when you're listening listen for these kinds of transition phrases because as I stated earlier one of your main strategies is to be thinking a little bit ahead what are they gonna say next how you do that is by listening to uh, to these kind of transition markers discourse markers signal phrases what you know lots of textbooks and call them many different things uh, okay hang on I, I want to do a screen share okay hang on all right here's here's some examples in the beginning all right you're going to you the lecture in the lecture for example you're gonna hear things like this in the very beginning obviously of the lecture Okay, today I want to talk about marmosets. <laughs> I don't know why I have marmosets on my brain. I have no idea. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is... Now, these phrases are obviously going to introduce the main topic, which you are most certainly going to have a question about. So, pay attention at the very beginning of the lecture. Today we're going to look at... Tonight I want to look at... All right, uh, he's introducing his topic. They'll always do that. They will not just say points. You're always going to hear some kind of discourse marker. Uh, okay, in a conversation, a little different, but kind of the same. You might uh, listen to a conversation, most likely. You will listen to at least one of the conversations where it's some kind of customer service situation so you'll hear the customer service hi what can I do for you how can I help you uh, what can I do for you today um, very typically this this kind of a conversation is pretty much always on the TOEFL you may even have two of them uh, 
where it's some type of some type of customer service interaction. Very common. Uh, okay. Hello, Antonio. Thanks for joining. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Uh, fine. Fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining. We're we're looking at the at the TOEFL listening test today. In case you're lost, <laughs> are you planning on taking a TOEFL test, Antonio? Uh, not 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 now. Okay. Uh, I'm, right. I'm I'm improving for my job only. I'm sorry for your what? For my job. For your job. Okay. Yes. Jo job. All right. Okay. All right. Um. All right. There's going to be different kinds of lecture structures that you listen to. All right. For example, Antonio's listening for his job. All right. If somebody's doing a presentation, these same skills. It's really the same thing. So even if you're not, not taking a TOEFL test, these are valuable skills to learn and, and things to think about when you're listening to a second language, English. Uh, okay. Lectures will have different structures. For example, if uh, somebody, if the lecturer, professor, or whoever is explaining several ideas, they will introduce that by saying something like there are several theories of uh, why a marmoset takes care of its young or whatever. There are several possible explanations. There are many different views. Okay, if you hear this, then you know that they're going to make several points. Okay, there are many different views. You're going to have probably many. They might say there are two possible theories. They might even give a number. When they do this, you know that you need to write down in your notes what are those theories. If they give three different theories, you better know them because you're almost certainly going to have questions about them later in the test. Uh, obviously, okay, when the speaker wants to make a contrast or a con maybe he's introducing a contrasting theory. Uh, in contrast, on the other hand, or possibly a similar theory. Similarly, but different. However, additionally, okay, uh, you know, you've got to be listening for transition words that show that the speaker is going to be presenting a new idea. Sometimes they make it a little easier. The speaker will ask a rhetorical question. Anastasia, do you know what a rhetorical question is? Yes, uh, the you don't need to give answers to this question. Very good. That's correct. A question that it's not necessary to give a, a response to. to. Yeah. Right. So it's very common in a TOEFL lecture that you would listen to to hear the professor say something like this. So why would this happen? Okay. Why does the marmoset abandon its elderly marmosets in the jungle? <laughs> uh, what is the reason for this? How could this happen? What leads to this? It, this shows that there's going to be some kind of cause and effect. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you, you need to be making notes of that. There's going to be some sort of cause and effect situation. Uh, X causes Y. X results in Y. X produces Y. They'll use words like causes, results, produces when they're actually giving the point, the cause and effect point, or really I should say two points because there's two things. There's going to be a cause and there's going to be an effect. Keep in mind that it could be an active phrase, X leads to Y, or it could be uh, spoken passively. Y is caused by X. Uh, y is due to X. Okay, it could be either way, but same same basic idea. 
Uh, sometimes the lecturers will speak in the passive tone. Um, let's uh, let's uh, actually talk about that for just a second. Um, let's see, uh, Jose. Yes. Are you familiar with the play Macbeth? No. <laughs> what is the meaning? Uh, Macbeth. It's the title of a famous play. Ah, uh, movie. <laughs> It probably is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. All right. So, if I ask you, thank you, Antonio. If I ask you who wrote Macbeth, go ahead and answer me in a full sentence. Go ahead, Antonio, since you know. Mm, uh, I don't have an idea. Okay, I'm I'm asking Antonio. Uh, Macbeth was uh, Ryan. By Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. Ta da! Very good, Antonio. Let's hear it for Antonio. That is passive tense. Macbeth was written by Shakespeare. We use was and written the past participle. You're often going to hear passive tense, in the, especially in the lecture part. So get used to it. Uh, the car is. Self-driven. The Google car drives itself. That's active. The Google car drives itself. The Google car is self-driven. That's self-driven. Driven is the past participle. Of course, in a lecture, we often don't use the who. We're more concerned with the process. So you're often going to hear passive, passive tense. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Zingu, are you there? Oh, I don't know what he's doing. Zingu? <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Anastasia, who, yeah. who, who built the pyramids? Uh, Egyptians. Okay, give me a sentence in the passive form. Uh, Egyptians built uh, the pyramids. No, that is an active form. You're going to start with uh, your. Okay. Uh huh. Pyramids were uh, built by Egypti Egyptians. <laughs> <laughs> Egyptians. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Egyptians, yeah. Anastasia, can you walk like an Egyptian? Um, I can try. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. Uh, let's see. What's uh, what's one I can give to Jose? Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, Jose, who performed the famous dance? The moonwalk. The moonwalk. <laughs> I don't have an idea. Oh, come on! You have to know. Oh, really? Okay, class. Okay, Anastasia. It's in, it's in the uh, chat box there. Anastasia, uh -huh. put it in the chat box for you. Yeah, just mistakes and the word Michael. Yeah, thank you. Elizabeth comes through. That is the correct spelling of Michael. Okay. Elizabeth. All right. Uh, Jose. Mm -hmm. So, so can you, this is a hard one, kind of. Can you express that in a passive form? Uh, the, the moon pass. Uh, Moonwalk. Ah, uh, moonwalk. Mm. Uh, the moonwalk was dance. By Michael Jackson. Okay. We you probably wouldn't say was danced. It's a little awkward. We would probably use was performed. Mm, was performed okay. by Michael Jackson. Notice we often have by to show who, who the you know, uh, preposition by to show who did something. Doesn't have to be. A, in the passive form, doesn't have to be. Uh, it could be the pyramids were built in the 
2000 in the year 2000 BC. It could be in, all right? Uh, you know, a time, okay? I just want you guys to get used to that because, you know, to, or at least to understand because you're, it's going to be very common to hear that uh, in the, especially in the lecture. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Moving along. All right. Very, this should be quite obvious. All right. If you see any of these phrases, you best get your pencil ready. One approach, one theory is the idea is the concept, the basic premise. Okay, any of these phrases, get ready to make notes because he's going to make one of the key points of the lecture. No doubt about it. Uh, all of these things, uh, maybe you, you may or may not know. Well, okay, let's actually talk about the vocabulary. One approach. Um, what does that mean? Okay, that in... To approach, you may know it as to get closer to something. But in this case, they mean uh, one approach, okay, method. one method, okay, one way to get closer to the idea, actually. You can think of it that way. Uh, or one way to look at it. One way to look at it or one approach really mean the same thing, okay? So that's mm -hmm. what that means. So there's going to be a key point. What what's a theory? It's like a one hypothesis. Thank you, Vince. Vincent, what? Is, wow, you read my mind. I was just going to ask you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, very good. Another big word. A hypothesis. One, um, one idea. A theory does not mean it's absolutely proven. Of course, we have we deal with common theories like the theory of evolution now. We can't 100% prove it, but I think most people are pretty sure it's true. But it's still a theory, because there's no way to prove it absolutely. Very good, a hypothesis. All right. Uh, I think you all know what the idea is means. The concept is pretty much the same thing as the idea. What is a, what is a premise? Zingyu, do you know what a premise is here? P R E M I S E. Zingu, do you know that word? Premise. Does anybody? I, I don't know where Zingu is. Does anybody know premise? It's an uh, an idea that, uh, like in the, the phrase, ba basic premise uh, will be the brick. Okay, of great. An idea, I don't know. The, Is it the, mean a previous idea? Okay, you're both right there. Both of you are pretty much right. A principal idea, okay, the first idea on which other ideas are based. You're all right, Elizabeth, outside the class, and, and you guys as well. Elizabeth, we have room. Why don't you come join us? Um, you're invited. Come on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the first idea. Uh, if you're going to use the word premise, that means there's other ideas that build on that idea. Yeah. But the premise previous. is pre like previous. Like you said. That's right. Very good. Okay. That's the idea. Yes. All right. Now, obviously, again, if you see any of... If you see. I'm sorry. How insane am I? If you're in the listening test and you hear the professor say, one theory is that the marmoset, blah, 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 blah. Okay, get ready to write it down because most certainly you're going to have one of your key points, which will, again, most certainly be in the questions you are about to be asked on the test. Likewise, if you hear phrases like, for example, or one instance of this, or consider, or we see this in, or we see this when, we see this, uh, that we do that to introduce an example. Um, okay, now, really the points are much more important, but 
you will have questions about the examples that the lecturer uses to illustrate or prove his point. Okay, there will be questions. So, again, when you're listening, actively listen. When the speaker says, for example, get ready to write, because you're going to be right, you should be writing something down. All right. Um, okay, sometimes the lecturer, lecturer, the professor, whoever, will talk about, will introduce some idea that's going to talk about stages or process, sequence, whatever. All right, when they, when they do that, you've got to get ready to make a list. Or uh, you may be looking at a process flow diagram in the test later. So make appropriate notes. This happens, make an arrow, then this, then make an arrow, then this. Get ready to make, in your notes, some kind of a flow chart of your own. A flow chart is where you have a balloon and an arrow and a balloon and an arrow. <laughs> One thing happens, then the next, then the next. All right, uh, again, as I keep saying, they're going to they're going to introduce these ideas. They'll use words like like this. They'll use words like process. There's a process, the development of the marmoset. Oh, if they talk about development of a marmoset, what are they going to be talking about? What do you think? A marmoset. Do you guys know what a marmoset is? My crazy, stupid no. example. I don't it, know. It's like this monkey thing that has really big eyes and stupid ears. It looks like a clown. Um, and it's a kind of animal. Can, can you write down this word? Sure. Please. It's a type of animal. And very typically, uh, it's very normal to hear a lecture about nat nature or natural things. Whatever. Monkeys or the white rhinoceros. <laughs> Something. Very, very normal. Okay, if I talk about the development or the life stages of a marmoset, you're, you're going to be thinking about infancy, a baby, juvenile, uh, adult, elderly, all right? Immediately, if before the speaker starts talking about that, if he s says the stages of development of a marmoset, I'm already writing down one, two, three, four. I already know what he's going to say. I'm anticipating him talking about a baby, a teenager, a teenager marmoset, or juvenile, uh, adult, and uh, <laughs> thanks for the link, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. You guys may learn nothing about listening skills. We'll learn a little about marmosets. <laughs> 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 okay. All right, as long as we're learning something, you know. Okay. Uh, obviously, and then the very clear and obvious ones, which I've taught you in any of the class, when you're speaking or writing, absolutely, you should always be using these transition markers, discourse markers, signal phrases, whatever you want to call them, first, second, third, next, then, initially, finally. Again, if you're really keyed in and listening to these types of words, uh, you know, you actively list, okay, what's he going to say next? You're really concentrating when you, when you hear something like that. Um, all right, now, we, I've been talking about signal words for the lecture. Let me talk about signal words you'll want to be listening for in the conversation, in the beginning of the conversation. Somebody's going to say, I have a problem. I have an issue. I have some difficulty with blah, blah, blah. I've got a little bit of trouble. They're going to say that complete sentence, and then they're going to tell what their problem is. This is your topic. So if you're listening for a problem, issue, trouble, and then you listen very carefully, you're going to understand the topic most certainly. You're going to have a question on the TOEFL test about the 
what is the main problem? Always. There's always a question about this. So listen for these words and write down whatever they say. Okay, there's obviously conversation. There's more than one person. The other person will say something like, why don't you go jump off a bridge? <laughs> uh, they're going to make a suggestion. Why don't you capture a live marmoset? If I were you, <laughs> I'd go jump off a bridge. Maybe you should go jump off a bridge. Have you thought of jumping off a bridge? Okay, what do you need to write down if you hear that? Jump off bridge. Solution. Okay? Possible solution. What I do? All right? I might even write, uh, for example, in notes, I might write S1. Solution 1. They're going to give one person, it's always the same scenario, basically, in TOEFL. One person has a problem. There may be, sometimes you have conversations with more than two people. There may be three people. But either any case, in any case, there's going to be one person with a problem and the other people are trying to help him. So you're going to have solution one, solution two, solution three. Two, three solutions. There's, they're not going to give you eight different solutions. That's not going to happen. Two or three or four solutions. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Marmoset. Okay, all right, so get ready. to Write down those solutions, S1, jump off bridge. I mean, that's how you do your notes. S2, uh, bury your head in sand. Okay, all right, that's solution two. Uh, solution three, why don't you go uh, asterisk, question mark, upside down, slash, yourself. Woo! Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, 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 I keep saying it. Keeping very good notes is important, but what are you making notes of? Well, somebody says the problem, why don't you? Okay, problem P, psh, notes, S1, S2. In many cases, there's a service encounter. I mentioned this earlier, some kind of customer service situation which you will be then you will listen to and then you'll answer questions they will use words like requirement what's a requirement Zingu are you there I'm up here hi what does the word requirement mean demand demand some okay something that is necessary yeah. The thing you must necessary. Necessary. You must have. That's right. Uh, okay, Anastasia, what is an application? Uh, it's a form, I guess. Yeah, a form. The verb is to apply. Uh, mm -hmm. Supplement. So, so, okay, an application okay. is something, some kind of form that you have to fill out in order to be able to do something, to receive permission yes. or to receive the go-ahead to do something. You apply for a job. You fill out an application. Something exactly. you must do first. All right, a form you just mentioned. A form is some kind of paperwork that must be done. Whether it's a computer form or actual paper form, doesn't matter. What's a recommendation, Antonio? Is uh, uh, is some letters and or, or somebody talks uh, about you in a good way. Okay, talks about a person in a good way. Um, if I recommend my friend John for a job, I'm saying that I think John would do a good job at the company. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be a person. Antonio, could you recommend a good restaurant for yes, me? Yes. Okay, all right. Exactly. Exactly. All right, uh, Jose. What is prohibited? Uh, well, prohibited is something forbidding. Uh, Very good. And not restricted. Yeah. That is exactly correct. Uh, forbidden or restricted. Very good. That is perfect. Or just banned. Banned. Yeah, that's another way to say it. Okay. Good. Those are all. Those are synonyms. 
Um, sometimes you'll hear a customer service conversation. Sometimes they'll be talking about some kind of event, a social event, or something that's going to happen in the future. And so they'll introduce that idea or the topic of the conversation like this. Did you see some kind of announcement? Have you heard about uh, something that's going to happen in the future? Uh, I need to let you know about, I'm going to give you information about some sort of event or situation. You can listen for keywords like program, event, opportunity, chance. Somebody may be talking, for example, about a job opening. Did you hear about the job opening? I have to let you know about a job opening. Um, there's a great opportunity at the university. Did you see the notice about the job opening? Something like that. Um, okay, they may use keywords, participate, plans, open to. Okay, actually, let's look at a couple of these words. To participate, what, what does that mean? Vicent. Vicent, are you there? Okay, uh, participate Thank means to you. take part of something. Right. Okay. Uh, Zingyu, what does open to mean? Ooh, tricky. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Who, who can help us here? The, if I say the job is open to all juniors and seniors. And just applying for only for juniors and seniors. Right. Okay. O open to... It t I use that phrase to show who is included. Okay. Uh, I see. Okay. Uh, the the children's beauty contest is open to all little girls under the age of ten. So if you're your eleven, and, can, and you're your daughters can take part. Ah. <laughs> Really? Anastasia, have you ever been in a beauty contest? No, never. No, never. We, uh, we don't have here such as in Kazakhstan things. That's I mean, good. like, you know, con contents, <laughs> those, but uh, I saw on, uh, on the TV how small kids in the United States, you know, know, just uh, uh, making crazy makeups, go tent, yeah. you know, yeah. like... Uh, uh, just Horrible. you know, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes uh, I'm just really um, sorry for those kids. You know, they just parents want uh, to earn money. Yeah, it's. On, on I I think it's disgusting. I'm glad they don't do it <laughs> in Kazakhstan. <laughs> Good. It shows a, a modicum of common sense. I, I don't even understand what that is. I don't know why Americans do that. It's just weird to me. Mm -hmm. Um, very weird. It, I don't understand it. Uh, okay. What else? All right. Just all right. You you need to know. Uh, okay. Uh, signal words. Listening for signal words. All right. Now, and ne if you remember in the beginning, I said you have to know what a, what a speaker is feeling. You're going to probably have a question about that. Um. So. Uh, very simply, no, this is very simple. You can you can hear this from their intonation. Are they excited? All right, is the speaker excited? Are they using a high pitch? Are they talking like this? Because no one says, "I'm going to go kill myself." I've had such a horrible day. I won the lottery. Okay, I won the lottery would be up there, but I'm going to kill myself. It would be in low disappointed or upset, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> All right? I'm not, oh, really. I want to kill myself. I, no. I'm stupid. No, yeah. that. Well, that would be stupid. Don't, don't do that. I haven't taught you everything that you need to know yet. I have so much more to teach you, Zingyu. You, you can't kill yourself. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the person may be uncertain or confused. For example, in conversation, you you could definitely, well, almost certainly, 
one person's not going to know what to do. They're going to be asking for questions. Uh, they're going to be asking questions of some sort of to some sort of customer service person. So they're most almost definitely going to be confused. And you may have a question about that. Um, the speaker A, the man in the conversation, seems to be A, disappointed, B, excited, C, confused, D, stupid. Okay, you're going to pick C, confused. Okay, uh, transitions, all right, we looked at this. All right, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time to listen to an example. We, we talked about this a lot. Let's listen to what an actual lecture is going to sound like, all right? So, everyone, quiet time. Okay, we're going to do a little listening. I'm going to give you an example of a typical TOEFL lecture that you are going to have to ask, answer questions about. Now, I might suggest it would be good practice for you guys to have a paper and a pencil and make some notes, okay? Why not? It's good practice. Uh, okay, so let me just key this puppy up. And here we go. Please listen carefully. Track one. Listen to a biology professor give a talk on an environmental issue. There's been a lot of talk over the last few decades about greenhouse gases. Those gases in the atmosphere that trap radiation from the sun so that after it passes into the atmosphere, it doesn't pass out. People are increasingly conscious of the environmental effects of their daily activities, which is a good thing. But all the publicity can be confusing, too. I think writing for the general public about science is a real service, but, well, it's not nice to say, but I wish some of these people would verify things with real scientists more often. They'd save themselves some embarrassment. With that in mind, I'd like to clear up some things about that hot topic carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. It uh, absorbs energy from the sun. In that respect, it's uh, like um, water vapor and methane, two other naturally occurring greenhouse gases. You all know that carbon dioxide is produced when we burn fossil fuels, coal, uh, petroleum products, uh, natural gas, and that those fuels run a lot of the machines and manufacturing processes that drive modern life. Those are the sources that get all the public attention. But of course, we produce carbon dioxide as a waste product too. It's one of the byproducts of respiration. We breathe in air, use up some of the oxygen, and uh, breathe out air that contains carbon dioxide. So do other animals. Because carbon dioxide is part of the natural life cycle, nature has a way of dealing with it. How does nature control the amount of carbon dioxide floating around in the atmosphere? I thought the ocean soaked it up. Yes, that's one way. Carbon dioxide is very soluble in water. Soluble. Uh, I don't have to explain that one to you, because the roots related to the word dissolve, <laughs> right? So, carbon dioxide is pulled readily out of the air and into the water. Now, uh, the oceans also release some of their carbon dioxide, but on balance, they absorb more. So that means that if we produce artificially more than would naturally be emitted through life processes, the ocean could, as Jason put it, soak it up. Unfortunately, if we're looking for a solution to carbon dioxide pollution, <laughs> the ocean isn't it? And that's because um, the ocean absorbs gases from the atmosphere very, very slowly. If we suddenly increase the amount of uh, carbon dioxide we produced, current models suggest that it would take 1,000 years for it to mix into seawater. And even then, there would still be a small amount left. So, over the short and medium term, we can't rely on the ocean to take up the slack for us. Okay, so that's one way nature deals with carbon dioxide. What's the other? Uh, plants, isn't it? I mean, plants breathe carbon dioxide the way we breathe air. Sure. I was actually kind of surprised that wasn't the one mentioned first. 
Yes. Plants require carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. The more dense the growth of large plants, um, the more carbon dioxide is absorbed. Such an area, including forests of large, old-growth trees and also the ocean, where carbon dioxide is absorbed in large quantities, is called a carbon sink. The carbon dioxide gas is sucked in, kind of the way water is sucked down the drain in your sink after you wash the dishes. In fact, in the ocean, there are algae, seaweed, um, other kinds of marine plants, too, that rely on carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis, just like the green plants on land. It's just that algae are far, far smaller. Now, here's something interesting. Like the ocean, green plants release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well as absorb it. Um, when a plant dies, you know, if it burns in a forest fire or just dies of old age and decays, then its carbon dioxide is back in the air. So it only holds it in over its lifetime. However, this is the interesting part. Unlike the ocean, green plants soak up carbon dioxide to use it, to make the energy they need to live and grow. So what they found in some regions, populated industrialized regions, is that increased levels of carbon dioxide can stimulate plant growth. There's more of the fuel the plants need for energy, so they grow more green and dense and lush and use more of it. In other words, the amount of carbon dioxide used up by plants can increase quickly in response to the environment. Some people have suggested that we can use that natural phenomenon to help deal with increased levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. What is the discussion mainly about? Okay. As Mr. Lecturer Narrator says in his narrator voice, what is the lecture mainly about? The lecture is about... I want a job as a narrator. <laughs> <laughs> Environmental issue. Okay, can you be more specific? Yeah, about the uh, exit gas. The exit pollution. What? I don't know how to pronounce this gas. <laughs> uh, ah. But I will find in the text, you know, <laughs> it will be in the towns for this one. Not really. You you might you might get it that it is <coughs> supposition, supposition, supposition. <laughs> Funny, Jose. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Jose says, I, I assume you're saying greenhouse gas. All right. I think greenhouse gases is closer. It's not really pollution, uh, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. because pollution has a, there's a lot more, they'd be talking about a lot more. Really, the topic is greenhouse gases. I, I agree with Jose. And specifically, greenhouse gases, but they only talk about one kind of gas. All right. So, yes. right. So, Antonio, what's that gas that they specifically? Yes, ca carbon dioxide or something like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> CO2, carbon dioxide. Yes. dioxide. One carbon yes. mo molecule, two, two oxygens. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, in my notes, for example, if they're talking just because I know that C O with a little two, all right. So in my notes, I'm not writing carbon dioxide. Okay, I just write okay. C O two, and I know what that is from previous experience. So yes, the, the controlling idea is definitely C O two. the The big picture, green, Jose is correct. Greenhouse gases more focused in on carbon dioxide. Very good. What causes carbon dioxide to be released into the air? Actually, they mentioned three things. What causes carbon dioxide to be re released into the air? Leandro, were you able to hear the... Leandro, are you there? Yeah, okay. Uh, Zeno. 
Give me what are one of the three ways that carbon dioxide is released into the air? Mm, when I listen, mm, I only understand the main idea. You, you ask me this question, I mm. can't guess. <laughs> mm. uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, listen. Can you can you give me an idea? What are there the in the lecture they mentioned three ways that CO two gets released into the atmosphere? What? Okay. Uh, actually, I was taking notes about uh, another thing, but uh, I think <laughs> she she mentioned the uh, plants uh, release carbon dioxide. She did. I didn't. I didn't think anybody would get that. Because that came at the end. She did. Very good, actually. Plants release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when they die or get burned. Yes, and that was kind of strange because in the very in near the beginning she she gave two two ways that it, CO2 is released in the atmosphere and then almost near the end she mentioned that which uh, which Vincent Vincent just mentioned. Very good. I didn't think anybody was going to get that one. I thought I was tricking you. Uh, okay, Paulo, are you there? Yeah. Okay, Paulo, what uh, what's another way that CO two is released into the air? Were you able to hear that? I, I don't know if you say it already, but I think the photosynthesis. Ah, oh, that's the way it's taken out. That's my next question. You're jumping ahead. Oh, that okay. CO2 is absorbed by plants and photosynthesis. All right. That's the opposite. Oh, good lesson to be learned there. Be careful when you're answering the questions. You know, you'd be reading it, of course, the listening questions in the TOEFL exam. You can read the questions. You don't just hear the questions. Uh, okay. So you, would, you, I'm just asking the questions because we're running out of time, and I, I want to see... Uh, how much you guys absorb from the listening. Anastasia, what's another way that CO2 is released into the atmosphere? Fossils and also fuels like uh, petrol, uh, gas. Okay. Fossil fuels, which, Fossil. In which include coal, oil, natural gas. And yes, they burn fossil fuels in industrial plants, manufacturing, automobiles, of course. Right. And there's one more. Our, our breathing. That's right. Antonio has got it. Breathing. Human beings breathing. Every time we breathe out, CO2 comes out. Human beings or animals. Of course, animals. I can feel it. Breathe. You can feel it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you causing a greenhouse gas effect in your apartment? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> okay. All right, very good. So those are the three ways. There are almost certainly going to be questions about these three points. There almost certainly is going to be, there, definitely there's going to be a question. We actually we just heard it about the overall topic and main idea. Um there is almost certainly going to be questions about possible solutions or how the CO2 gets soaked up. Um, somebody already mentioned it, photosynthesis and plants. All right, Paulo got that one. One more. Uh, Jose, how else can, can CO2 be absorbed? Plants and photosynthesis, yes. What's the other way? Well, then cheat. Uh, look in the chat box. <laughs> okay, we've only got a minute left, so... Yes, Anastasia's got it. The ocean. The ocean soaks up some uh, CO2, right? What is that called? Now, a couple times, you may have noticed in the lecture, and this is important, I haven't talked about this yet, do you remember in the lecture the professor says, and so CO2 is soluble in water. 
I don't have to explain that word, do I? Because it comes from the word dissolve. You all know that word. If in the lecture the speaker really draws attention to one word, soluble, guess what? There's going to be a question about it later. Uh, she did this, the lecture also did the same thing with another word, or actually phrase. She said, oceans or photosynthesis of plants, we call those a carbon sink. She paused before she said it, and then she very clearly pronounced it. All right, she <laughs> drew a lot of extra attention to that. Guess what? There's going to be a question about carbon sink. So you, when you're listening, you're going to get clues of what your questions are going to be about. You should already pretty much know 80% of what the questions are going to be when you're done the listening and you look at your notes. I can predict the questions. I haven't even looked at the questions. I know what they're going to be. Okay, um, again, I'm sorry, a brief hiatus tomorrow. Sorry, I couldn't book a class. I'll be back Thursday and Friday at this time, and we're going to practice. We're going to do a lot more listening to audio, and we're going to do the actual questions, both Thursday and Friday's class. Thank you all very much. Bye. And I'll see you all. guys soon. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks for the class. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye yeah, now. You. you have a oh. question? Okay. Well, better make it fast because I, I'm I gotta go. I'm I have another class. I'm already uh, late for. I have a last question, and you give me that material. I only understand the main idea. Could you give me some advice to help me? Uh, okay. Well. That is about a, a half an hour question, and I'm sorry, I have another class that I have to teach another student, and I'm already a minute late, and they're not going to wait, and I, I have to close this, okay? Can, can we talk about this another time? I absolutely, I'm oh, very oh, sorry, yeah, okay. Zingyo, I'm already late. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you.